Curiosity Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Time once again to observe the many forms the furrow brow can take as two more teams tackle several dozen difficult questions in order to earn themselves a place in the second stage of this competition. The losers will play again only if their score is among the four highest losing scores from this first round. Now, the University of Edinburgh was founded in the late 16th century under a charter granted by James VI. And in various schools over the following centuries, Charles Darwin studied medicine there. Other alumni include Sir Walter Scott, the philosopher John Stuart Mill, the writers Thomas Carlyle and Robert Louis Stevenson, and the former Prime Minister Gordon Brown. Representing around 35,000 students and with an average age of 21, let's meet the Edinburgh students. Hi, I'm Ben Russell-Jones. I'm originally from Bridgend in South Wales, and I'm studying philosophy and politics. Hello, I'm Lewis Thomas. I'm from Strathkinnis and Fife, and I'm studying for an MSc in history. This is their captain. Hi, my name is Rishi Sundar. I'm from Manchester, and I'm studying computational physics. Hi, I'm Al Karuna Ratna. I'm from Hull, and I'm studying physics. Now, Peterhouse claims to be the oldest of the Cambridge colleges, founded in the late 13th century and granted its royal charter by Edward I. Notable patrons include the computer pioneer Charles Babbage, the physicist and engineer Lord Kelvin, and more recently the comedian David Mitchell, the director Sam Mendes, and Steph Cook, the Olympic pentathlete. Representing 370 students with an average age of 22, let's meet the Peterhouse team. Hi, I'm Beatrix Halson. I'm from Solihull and I study natural sciences. Hello, I'm Anna Mae Shetty. I live in Lancaster and I study medicine. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Eli Hong. I'm originally from Stratford-upon-Avon and I'm studying medicine. Hi, I'm Lucy Hart. I'm from London and I'm studying physics. <laughs> OK, the rules are the same as ever, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzer. Here's your first starter for ten. Drina, Size, San Luis Rey and the Terabithia are words that appear... Edinburgh Sundar. Uh, Narnia. No, I'm afraid you lose five points. Along with what general type of structure in the titles of fictional works uh, by the Nobel Lobbit... Bridge. Bridge is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on international trade. The Uruguay round, concluded in 1994, was the eighth stage in what series of trade agreements you may give either the full name or its acronym? So I'll say the World Trade Organization, or... Is that OK? Yeah, that's... The stage. Or the agreements, because it could be, like, the Doha Accords or something. I mean, we're think. looking at agreements. So the Doha? Doha? Do so, so the Doha Agreement? The Doha Agreement? Um, the Doha Agreement? No, it's the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT including the imposition of a high tariff on imported grain, the so-called battle for wheat of the 1920s was a policy of the fascist government of what country? So the 1920s Italy? fascist government. So Italy? Yeah, Italy's most likely. Yeah. Yeah. Italy. Italy? Correct. Who was the Prime Minister of Britain when legislation to repeal the Corn Laws was passed in 1846? So I think this is Peel. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Peel. Robert Peel is correct. Ten points for this. Associated with the city of Tula, south of Moscow, and with the works of Anton Chekhov, what often decorative vessel for the preparation of tea? Edinburgh Corona Ratna. Samovar. Samovar is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses this time are on the Greek alphabet, Edinburgh. You used in physics to represent the quantum wave function. What is the penultimate letter of the Greek alphabet? I need you to spell it. Psi, yeah. Psi, P-S-I. P-S-I is correct. Give two of the three Greek letters whose names are seven letters long. All three names contain elements meaning bare, smooth or little. Omicron, Omicron. Is seven and... Epsilon. Right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Omicron and Epsilon. Correct. Upsilon is the other one. Used in an English expression meaning not the slightest amount, what is the ninth letter of the Greek alphabet? Iota. Uh, iota. Iota is correct. Ten points for this. 
What Latin-derived term is the name of the family of mammals that includes the martins, otters, badgers, stoats and weasels? Pete House Hong. Mustelids. Mustelids is correct. <laughs> Peter House, these bonuses are on prominent people who share a given name. For example, Bradley Wiggins and Bradley Cooper. In each case, name both people from the description. Firstly, the German-born author of The Origins of Totalitarianism and an alter ego for the character Miley Stewart in a teen sitcom. Hannah, Hannah, Montana. Hannah Montana. Sorry, Hannah Arendt and Hannah Montana. Montana yeah. yes. Correct. Secondly, the French artist who painted The Dance Class and At the Races, and the US author who created Tarzan of the Apes. So that's Degas, so Edgar Degas. And do we know who created Tarzan? Do not. Giant of the Apes. Is what? Tim? No. It would be Tarzan rather than Hunter yeah. Tarzan, sorry, I missed it. Yeah. Um, but you haven't given a generic American name. <laughs> Edgar Harris. Edgar Smith? Edgar yeah, Harris? Yeah, um, so Edgar Degas and Edgar Harris. No, it's Edgar Rice Burroughs was the man who created Tarzan of the Apes. Edgar Degas was the painter. And finally, the first woman to fly solo from England to Australia and the US comedian who wrote The Girl with the Lower Back Tattoo. Maybe Earhart for she, one. Wasn't she the Atlantic? Yeah, she was the Atlantic. Okay. Yeah, rather than England. Um, and the girl with a lower back tattoo. I feel like I've seen this before, but I'm not sure. Any ideas? I do not know. No, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I think we'll have to pass that one. It's Amy Johnson and Amy Schumer. Ten points for this. A church window at Skillington in Lincolnshire depicts which mountain? Its highest point being a little below that of Monte Rosa. It's a memorial to the local vicar, Charles Hudson, who died during the first ascent of the mountain in question in 1865 in a party led by Edward Wimper. Edward Thomas. Uh, the Matterhorn. The Matterhorn is correct. <laughs> right, here are your bonuses. They're on Sweden and Switzerland in the 20th century. In each case, give the decade in which the following took place. Firstly, Stockholm hosted the fifth Summer Olympiad, and in Zurich, Hugo Ball established the Cabaret Voltaire, a performing space for the Dada movement. Tens or twenties? 1910s, because Patton was at Stockholm Olympics before he was in Ireland. And he started like late 18, so it would be around 20 years, so it makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that's a good 1910s. Yeah, direct yeah. 1910s. Correct. Sweden passed legislation providing job security for women at marriage, and the Palais des Nations of the League of Nations was completed in Geneva. 30s or 40s? Uh, 1930s. I guess it's because of my early League of Nations, so. Back yeah. in the 20s. Um, 20s or 30s. Should we just go with 30s? I feel 30s. 30s, 30s yeah. It's right. a big place, isn't it? Uh, 1930s. 1930s is correct. In Switzerland, women were given the right to vote in federal elections. 80s. And three years later, ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest. 1971 and 1974. So yes. 70s. Uh, the 1970s. 1970s is correct. And it was 71 or 74. Well done. Right, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a map of part of the UK. For ten points, please name the county highlighted. Edinburgh Russell Jones. Bedfordshire. No. Anyone want a bus from Peterhouse? Peterhouse Halton. Buckinghamshire. It is Buckinghamshire, yes. Buckinghamshire is a historic centre of lace-making, which gives its name to a type of lace known as Buck's Point. For your bonuses, I want you to identify three more lace-making towns and cities, this time from both a map and a picture of their namesake lace. First, this city with a population of 94,000. So, we're looking at Ireland? Yeah, 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 Lucy, you won. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the, um, something like Munster. Um... No, that's Munster more... lace is a thing, I think. Mm -hmm. you any, go any other ideas? I don't think it is, but go for it. Munster. No, that's a province. It's Limerick. Mm -hmm. Secondly, this town with a population of 11,000. North of Paris. Is it Orléans? Sure. No. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. Because Rouen's going to be further to the west. Um, but have you heard of all your lace? I haven't heard of many kinds of lace, to be honest. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, just go for it. Orléans. Yeah. Orléans. 
Now that Chantilly, or Chantilly, according to Elvis Presley. And finally, this city population, 117,000. That's in Belgium. Um, that's Bruges. Yeah. Michel? Mm -hmm. Okay, Bruges. It is Bruges, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. More than 20 years after the death of the poet Paul Scarron, which historical figure became the second husband of Françoise Daubigné, the Marquise de Maintenon, in 1683? His own first wife was the Infanta Maria Teresa of Spain. Edinburgh Thomas. Louis XIV. Louis XIV is correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on technical terms. In each case, identify the term from the description. All three answers begin with the same three letters. Firstly, in mathematics, the multiplicative inverse, which for number x is 1 over x. That is the number that yields a product of 1 when multiplied by x. Reciprocal. Yeah. Reciprocal. Correct. Secondly, in biochemistry, protein molecules that recognise and specifically bind chemical messengers such as hormones or neurotransmitters, thus helping to trigger a cellular response to a signal. Receptors? Receptors? Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Receptors. Correct. And finally, in economics, a period of slow or negative growth, usually accompanied by rising unemployment. A more precise definition is two consecutive quarters of falling GDP. Recession. Recession is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Described as a tale, ultimately, of Catholic conversion and redemption, which novel of 1945 has the subtitle The Sacred and Profane Memories... Edward Thomas. Brideshead Revisited. Correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on parallel worlds in fiction. Which Studio Ghibli film begins with the ten-year-old Chihiro and her family crossing into the world of kami, or spirits. When they fail to leave by sunset, her parents are turned into pigs, and she must work to break the curse. Spirited away. Correct. The fog world and the other world are common names for alternate planes of reality in which series of psychological horror games set in an eponymous fictional town. I need the two-word series title only. Silent Hill. Okay. Yes. Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Correct. In which ongoing television series are the residents of Hawkins, Indiana, plagued by creatures from an alternate dimension referred to as the Upside Down? Stranger Things. Stranger oh. Things is correct. Ten points for you. <laughs> what is the common name of Lagopus mutus, a partridge-like member of the grouse family that breeds on high mountains in Scotland and has white plumage... Edward Thomas. Ptarmigan. Ptarmigan is correct, yes. Right, your bonuses this time are on philosophy. Prelude to a philosophy of the future is the English subtitle of which critique of traditional philosophy, first published in 1886, I need a precise four-word title in English or a five-word title in German. 1886. 1886. So who's around then? Um, Nietzsche. Schopenhauer. Is he that time? Beyond Good and Evil? Huh? What? Beyond Good and Evil, maybe? Yeah. Beyond that's three That's words in German, though. Beyond good and evil. Beyond good and evil is correct. Nice. The Sovereignty of Good is a 1970 philosophical work by which Irish-born British author, also noted for novels including The Nice and The Good and The Good Apprentice? Any idea, Ben? Sackville. OK, I don't know, I don't know. So, yeah, we're good? Yeah. Sackville. No, that's Iris Murdoch. Oh, Born in 1946, which moral philosopher discusses effective altruism in works such as The Most Good You Can Do? So, a late utilitarian... Yeah, I mean, he's a singer. Fun person. Yeah, I don't think he is utilitarian. Who else would, like... Effective altruism sounds like Peter Singer. OK, fair enough, then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sing Peter Singer. It is Peter well, Singer, you're right. <laughs> We're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music. For ten points, please name the artist performing. Georgia, Georgia. Edinburgh Russell Jones. Billy Holiday. It is Billy Holiday, yes. <laughs> That's the official state song of Georgia. For your bonus questions, you're going to hear three more versions of US state songs. I just need the name of the artist singing in each case. Firstly. Oh, give me a home. 
Brandon? Okay. This could be John Denver. Okay. Oh no, but there's like Hank Williams. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, that's better than what I asked. They might prompt on which one. Uh, just say Hank Williams and see if they ask. Yeah, it'd be Junior then. I think. Yeah, all right. Hank Williams. No, it's Pete Seeger. That was oh, Home on the Range, the official state song of Kansas. Secondly, you are my sunshine. Let's not listen in trying to figure out who it is. Uh, oh, um, this is Florida. But like, who would it be then? Yeah, who's singing it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I can't even think of a guess. It's not, it's not, it's not Florida. So I would say Chris Isaac. It's not obviously, but uh, it's not Chris either. Yeah, exactly. But like, uh, no, sorry, past this. That was in fact Louisiana. It was Chuck Berry. Oh, oh okay. Okay, fine. Finally. Sweet. Louis yeah, Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, and that was the gospel song of Oklahoma. <laughs> right. Ten points for this. Bardsea Island and Strumblehead near Fishguard mark extremities of which inlet of the Irish Sea? Its coastline is the location of resorts such as Abu Dhabi, Barmouth, and Aberystwyth. Edinburgh Russell Jones. Cardigan Bay. Cardigan Bay is correct, yes. <laughs> Three questions on diseases with names that usually appear in a plural form. Which infectious disease caused by paramyxovirus is characterised by swelling of the parotid glands, sometimes mumps. in conjunction with pancreatitis mumps. or orchitis? Mumps. Mumps. Yeah. Yeah. Mumps. mumps. Mumps is correct. Also known as frambesia, what infectious tropical disease manifests itself as a series of crusted tumours or ulcers on the surface of the skin? Oh, um, right. scabies. Okay. I don't know. I, right. It could be. Scabies. Yeah. All right. Scabies. Oh, it's yours. Okay. <sighs> Caused by the decalcification of bone, what condition is associated with a deficiency of vitamin D? Rickets. 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 Yeah. Rickets. Rickets. Rickets is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which Swedish scientist won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1903 for his work on the electrolytic theory of dissociation? An equation describing the effect of temperature on the velocity of a chemical... Edinburgh Sundar. Arrhenius. Arrhenius is correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on English towns with noted parish churches. In each case, name the town from the description. All three end in the same three-letter suffix. Okay. Firstly, a town roughly midway between Lincoln and Stamford. The slender Gothic spire of its parish church is said to have caused John Ruskin to swoon when he first saw it. This is oh. famous. Is it Grantchester? No, no, Grant no, no. No, no, okay. There's not home stuff. TR, no. Um, it could be, could be Boston? No, Boston. Yeah, Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. Boston. No, it's not, it's Grantham. A large town between Sheffield and Doncaster, secondly. All Saints Church is distinguished by its fan vault and perpendicular tracery. Yeah, that's from no, no, no. Rotherham. That's Rotherham. Yeah. Rotherham. Correct. Finally, a market town on the Upper Tyne, known for its Saxon crypt and early Gothic transept. Hexham. 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 I think so, yeah. All right. Hexham. Hexham is correct. <laughs> Thank you for this. The Al Amal or Hope orbiter that headed for Mars in July 2020 was designed by the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center in what country? Edinburgh Karuna Ratna. UAE. UAE is correct, United Arab Emirates. <laughs> These bonuses are on a colour. Orange Shirt Day on September the 30th, remembers the victims of residential Indian schools from the late 19th century in which Commonwealth country? Canada. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Canada. Correct. Which country saw the series of protests known as the Orange Revolution Ukraine. following a disputed Ukraine. presidential election Ukraine. in 2004? Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine. Correct. Which British actor plays Mr Orange in the 1992 film Reservoir Dogs? He's also appeared in Pulp Fiction. Rob Roy and Selma. Tim Roth. Tim Roth. Yeah. 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 Tim Roth. Tim Roth is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Which recent Pulitzer Prize winning novel begins? The first time Caesar approached Cora about running north, she said no. Its title is taken from the name used for the loosely organised network that aided fugitive <laughs> slaves from the Edinburgh South. Edinburgh Russell Jones. The Underground Railroad. Correct. 
you get a set of bonuses on geographical names. A prominent barrier reef is located in the tongue of the ocean, an area of deep water west of New Providence in what island country? Bahamas. Uh, Bahamas. I think New Providence is Bahamas. 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 Correct. Secondly, the coastal village of Tung lies about 40 miles west of what village named after a Dutchman and close to Dunnet Head? Johnny Groats. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think he's named after a Dutchman. I think he's named after a Dutchman. Johnny Groats. Johnny Groats is correct. Its name meaning Tung in Arabic, the Lisan Peninsula divides what highly saline inland body of water? Highly saline. The Dead, the dead, dead Sea. sea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dead Sea. That's correct, yes. We're going to take another picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a painting. For ten points, please name the artist. And a Brissandar. Basquiat. No, anyone want a buzz from Peter House? Peter House Hong. Mondrian. No, it's Tracy M in, it's ruined. So we'll go to another starter question in the meantime. What five-letter term denotes a hypothetical particle that is a lightweight candidate for dark matter? Peter House Hart. Axion. Axion is correct. <laughs> so you'll recall that we saw a picture by Tracy Emin shown at the Royal Academy in late 2020. That presented her works alongside watercolours by Edvard Munch. Your bonuses are on works by three more artists that have been exhibited alongside Emin in recent years. Name the artist in each case. Firstly, part of a joint exhibition in Vienna in 2015. Egon Schiele. Correct. Secondly, shown together with Emin's My Bed at Tate Britain. That looks like bacon to me. Yeah. Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon is correct, reclining woman. Finally, shown in a joint exhibition at Tate Liverpool. Oh, William Blake. William Blake, Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Right, ten points for this. One of the largest city squares in the world, Medan Medeca, is in which national capital, situated on the north coast of a populous tropical island slightly bigger than England? It was formerly known as Batavia. Edinburgh Thomas. Jakarta. Jakarta is correct. <laughs> Bonuses are on scientific terms. Study by Hippocrates of Chios. What four-letter name is given to the crescent-like geometrical shape formed from the area between the arcs of two circles? Um, yeah. Yeah. Cone. Okay. Cone. No, it's a loon. Okay, don't worry. So called because of the shape of their seed pods, the genus Lunaria comprises purple flowering plants known by what common name? Also that of a virtuous character trait. Mm. Honesty is a virtuous trans. What else? Mm. What what's virtuous? Generosity. <laughs> hope. No. Hope. All right. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, um, hope, faith, and charity. Um, can we think? Can we think of any virtuous plants? Uh, just we just say the whole. Uh, charity. No, is, that sounds like it. We don't. We don't. Pass yeah. it. Charity. No, it's honesty. Okay. Oh, it is. Fair enough. A lunula is a pale crescent-shaped mark found on what human anatomical structures? Eyes? Lunula. Oh, oh, is it, human is it the fingernail, structures. actually? Yeah, it's the yeah, fingernail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, what you got in your eyes? Uh, fingernail. Fingernail or toenail is correct, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. Space, number, paradox of the Grand Hotel and 23 problems. Edinburgh Sunder. Hilbert. Hilbert is correct. Right, your bonuses are on Asian capitals this time. The former name of what capital of British India survives in that of an international rugby trophy first awarded in 1879? Calcutta. Kolkata or Calcutta is correct. Calcutta, Cal. The former postal spelling of which capital survives in the official English name of a leading university founded in 1898 and known by the abbreviation PKU? Um, Peking. Beijing. Oh, Beijing. Peking, yeah. Beijing. yeah. Beijing. So, uh, should we say Beijing or Peking? Say, say Beijing. All right. Beijing. Correct. The former name of which capital survives in that of a long-haired goat whose fleece is used to make mohair? Kashmir, but that's... Kashmir, I was thinking. State. Yeah, it's not a capital. It's not a capital. It's not a city. Srinagar? It's the capital of Kashmir. Uh, I might as well then. Yeah, Srinagar. No, it's Ankara. OK. Oh, yes. Yeah, or Angora. Ten points for this. 
derived ultimately from the Latin for freed slave. What word is applied to figures such as Casanova and Byron's Don Juan? Peter Shetty. Castrato. No, certainly not. I'm afraid you lose five points. Byron's Don Juan, who are unrestrained by moral scruples, particularly regarding sexual affairs. Edinburgh Thomas. Libertine. Libertine is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses now on Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. In the first chapter of Jane Eyre, the narrator refers to the history of British birds, by which engraver and naturalist. Like a species Bewick. of swan is named after him. It's like Bewick or Busan or something, it seems to be. I don't... Bewick, I think. Yeah, go for it. I'm... Bewick. It's Buick, it's... that's correct, yes. Bewick. Jane describes a novel by Samuel Johnson as having a name that struck me as strange and consequently attractive. Which prince is the title figure of the novel? Ooh, a prince. No, 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 obviously not. Yeah. Um, Rupert. I don't, I don't see whatever. Frederick. I'm going to send back Rupert. All right, Frederick. No, it's Rasselas, the oh, Prince of Abyssinia. To what novel is Jane referring with the words... The corn fields, forest high, the mighty mastiffs, the monster cats, the tower like men and women. Something American. Gulliver? Gulliver's Travels? Yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gulliver's Travels. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Measured in the SI units of joule seconds. How much spin... Edward Sondar? Um, Planck's constant. No. I'm afraid you lose five points. How much spin angular momentum does a single photon have to the nearest factor of 10? Peter Hall's heart. 3.3 times 10 to the minus 34. It's 10 to the minus 34, yes, that's correct. Well done. <laughs> Your bonuses are on words that appear in titles of the Japanese video game franchise Tales of. In each case, give the single word from the description. Firstly, what word appears in both the title of a release originally scheduled for 2020? <laughs> and that was gone. Peter House had 80, Edinburgh had 270. Well, you were up against very tough opposition tonight, but uh, never mind. 270, Edinburgh is a terrific score, highest score so far, I think, in this round of the competition. Lovely stuff. Mm -hmm. Congratulations yeah. to Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you very much. We look very forward much. to seeing you in round two. Thank you. I hope you can join us next time for another first round match. But until then, it's goodbye from Peterhouse, Cambridge. Goodbye. Bye. It's goodbye from Edinburgh University. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>